and welcome to day 59. Today we're going to be discussing the kneadable eraser and how to best use it. Now as you can see I have a brand new kneadable eraser here that I've just taken the plastic off and I'm going to start warming it up in my hands to get it. It's really soft, it's a bit like Prestic. It's not quite as sticky as Prestic. And you want to start shaping it in a way that is going to best suit your drawing needs. Now the one side you want to give it a bit of a flattened edge and the other side you want to shape it into a nice point. Okay, now let's start working with it so I can show you how to use it. Now I'm going to lay down some graphite and no particular quality. You can use your pointy area to start removing some fine work. You've got to keep making it pointy and you put a very light pressure on because of course as soon as you put a heavy pressure on you're going to squash that. And the secret here is to give it a good strong base because if you make it far too sharp and pointy and it's too floppy then it's not going to have the strength. You see what it's doing there? It just collapses. So you want to give it a nice good strong base. So that your sharp point is a little bit firmer. And you've got to keep reworking it to be able to keep that point nice and firm. And of course the warmer it is, the more pliable it's going to be. So if you want it to be a little bit firmer, just don't work it up in your hands quite as much. Now what you'll notice with the kneadable eraser is that it doesn't completely remove the pencil from the paper. Your paper in those little white areas is not completely, completely white. And I'm going to show you that with a plastic eraser, which yes, sacrilege of all sacrilege, I do use from time to time. Now you'll see with your plastic eraser how much stronger the highlight is now that I've taken it off. Now what you can do is come back with your plastic eraser and just lightly rework. Now this is really good when you're doing um, highlights, small sharp highlights in the eye or when you're possibly drawing hair, something with a lot of fine detail. You use your kneadable eraser to lightly remove and you come back with your plastic eraser and just sharpen up a part of it so you can get a a line that fades from a bright highlight to a mid-tone highlight. So that is one way that you can use your kneadable eraser. The other way of course is you've got this nice bulbous effect at the bottom and you can start removing graphite where you feel you might have put it down too heavily. Now as you can see it works very gently. It doesn't do like a plastic eraser and just remove at lib. It works quite gently and of course you can push it lightly and dab for a slightly lighter effect. Now this is quite nice in an area that you might have put down a little bit too much graphite and you just want to lift some of it. It doesn't give you the effect of having rubbed out. Just slightly lifts the loose graphite. If you go to an area now where you want to completely remove it, you're going to have a little bit of a problem because it doesn't, well that's doing pretty well. I suppose because I've got a, a, a fine tooth paper here but if you've got a heavy tooth paper this is going to be even more difficult I'm putting a lot of pressure on here but you probably I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera but you'll probably see there that it hasn't completely lifted the graphite now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it'll do if you have a heavier piece of uh, a heavier area of graphite I'm going to come in here with my 8b I'm going to build it up slowly again but not working with all the different layers like I was before just to save time but I want to build it up to a certain extent, get my tone nice and dark without damaging the paper too much. Okay, so that's an abbreviated version of how one would build up tones. Watch previous videos for how it should be done properly. And this would be the wrong way to build up your tone, where you're just going in for the kill. Now let's have a look and see the effects that the kneadable eraser has on this. Now let's once again get our nice rounded bottom on the palm of my hand and let's start lifting. The 
giving some quite heavy pressure here and lighter pressure as I'm just removing less at the top. Okay, I'm not going to be able to remove much more graphite than that. It's lifted as about as much as it can lift. Now let's go down to where I've damaged the paper. Now can you see that I'm really putting pressure here. I'm actually even rubbing it and the needable eraser is having little effect. You can see that it is lifting some of the graphite that's loose sitting on top but it's really not doing anything to the graphite that I've laid down that has damaged the paper because what I've done there is what I was talking about in previous videos is where I've actually forced the graphite into the paper, I've damaged the tooth of the paper and the tooth has now trapped graphite in amongst the little damaged surfaces that we've got. You know, if you look at paper from a, a cross section, if we cut this paper and looked at, looked at it from the side, you, your, your paper is textured and in some of the heavier tooth you might have pretty sharp areas that is created in the manufacturing process of the paper. Now what's going to happen is if I'm drawing hard like this is I'm actually going to create that kind of effect where I've squashed it and in these little grooves here there's going to be graphite that is trapped because the paper has effectively on a microscopic level of course squashed down and trapped graphite underneath it so I just I can't lift it there's there's really little that I can do. If I want to be really aggressive I can come in here with my rubber eraser and I can really give it a grab but it's not going to lift as much as I want it to lift it is also going to damage the paper because I'm having to put some pressure on it so it's going to further damage my paper and it is still going to leave me with this ugly area here so that again is one of the advantages of slowly building up your your graphite so that you don't damage your paper so that your kneadable eraser can have more of an effect again just to recap we're going to work the bottom of our eraser into a ball to lift areas or we can work our eraser into sharper areas with a nice base to lift some of the lighter graphite. Now let's have a look and see how this works on where I've killed the paper. Oh, as you can see having little or no effect because really I have damaged the paper too much and here let's have a look here much better now we can see there that I didn't build up my tones the way that I did on previous drawings or previous demos because I was just trying to speed things along so it won't have had exactly the same effect as what it would have had my paper being a little, little bit less damaged but as you can see much much more effective a kneadable eraser is if your paper is not damaged and just to finish off I've just shaped my eraser into what would be probably the best shape round at the bottom maybe teardropish I suppose rounded at the bottom against your hand and a short but nice sharp point that you can even pinch to be much sharper for very fine detail but again you're going to have to repinch it each time to keep that point nice and sharp but make sure that the base of that sharp point has got some good structure to help it stand up nicely. Artists, I hope that that has helped you to understand the best ways to use your kneadable eraser and the advantages of a kneadable eraser over a plastic eraser. Your kneadable eraser can become a really, really good tool with your drawing. It becomes one of your assets. Artists, I hope that you have learned something from this little tutorial and I hope that you will like and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you tomorrow in day 60. Can you believe it? Day 60. We're two months in. Thank you for joining me. See you tomorrow. Bye. That's what you want to do.